Ron Scott here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a difference mask that will allow you to separate a foreground subject, moving or not, from a static background. This is similar to the effect that you see during football games and other sports, where they place graphics on the field that appear below the players. For this to work, you need two videos, or a still in a video, of exactly the same scene. One with the background itself, and the other with the subject in front of that background. The camera must be static, and the lighting must be exactly the same on both. I'm using Vegas Pro 12 here, but the same technique can be applied to other nonlinear editors. Starting with a new Vegas Pro project, insert five video tracks by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus Q five times. The top track, track one, is a dummy parent track and is left empty with no video on it. On track two, drop the video or still image with the background. Now make this track a child of track one. On track three, Drop the live action video. If your video contains audio, omit that track for now. Put only the video portion on this track. Make this track a child of track 2. On track 5, place another copy of the live action video on track 3. Leave this track as a parent or top level track. Make sure this video has exactly the same in and out points as the video on track 3. The action must match. If your live action video has audio, that will be on track 6. On track 4, place the text or other objects that you want to appear behind the live action but over the background. Make this track a child of track 1. If your video on tracks 3 and 5 are longer than the video on track 2, you will need to extend the length of the track 2 background video to match the length of these tracks. A quick way to do this is to create a subclip of the video on track 2 and then click and drag the end of the subclip video until it is the same length as the other two tracks. Your track should look like this. Now it's time for the magic. For the next steps, all our work will be on track 2. Click on the Compositing Mode button in the header of track 2 and select Difference from the pop-up menu. Put your track cursor somewhere in the middle of the tracks in the area of the live action and you should see something like this in your preview, which is the genesis of our difference mask. Now we begin to add effects to track 2 to complete the mask. Click on the Track Effects button in the header of track 2. When the Plugin Chooser dialog opens, double click on the following effects to select them into the Track Effects chain. Black and White, Levels, Invert, Median, Gaussian Blur, and Mask Generator. Click OK when all the effects are in the chain. When the Video Track Effects dialog appears, click and drag the Composite button so that it is to the left of the black and white button. Your plug-in chain in the Video Effects dialog should look like this. For now, turn off all but the black and white effect by clicking the check mark in each other effects button to uncheck it. Click the black and white effects button to select that effect and make sure the blend amount slider is set to 1.0. Next, check the levels checkbox to activate that effect and click the button itself to select the effects parameters dialog. Using the input start and input end sliders, make adjustments to create a high contrast black and white image where the foreground action subject is pure white and the background is black. Hold down the control key while using the mouse to make finer adjustments to the slider. This won't be perfect, but adjust until you get the best compromise of a solid white shape against a black background. A smattering of white dots in the background is okay. We'll fix that later. Activate and select the invert effect. Now the background is white with the subject black, which is what we need to mask out our moving subject from the background. Activate and select the median effect. Adjust the horizontal and vertical range sliders to remove all the dots in the background and most of the white holes or spots in the black subject. Try horizontal and vertical range values of 0.1 and an offset of 0.5 for now. We will fine tune these values in a bit. Activate and select the mask generator effect and make sure all parameters are at their default by selecting default from the preset menu at the top. Now it's time to see the mask really do its thing. Down in the header of Track 2, click on the Parent Composite Mode button and select Multiply Mask from the pop-up menu. And voila, you should see the mask at work. We're not quite there yet, 
Next, we need to fine tune the median filter parameters and add the Gaussian blur effect. Select the median filter and using its sliders, adjust the parameters and watch your video as you scrub through the action on the timeline. Look for places where the text shows through the subject or the background bleeds over the text. Use the offset slider as well. Once you have done your best with the median filter, activate the Gaussian blur filter and blur the edges of the mask slightly. Try very low values like 0 0.003. You don't want the edges to be too blurry. Continue to experiment with the median and Gaussian filters until you get a mask in effect that you're happy with. You may even find it useful to animate the median effect parameters to allow them to change for different parts of the live action. For even better results, you can apply a Bezier mask to the video on track 3, the live action track, to mask out any pesky areas. You will need to change the mask mode to negative to mask out the subject and not the text, and you will need to animate or keyframe the mask to keep it covering the moving subject. You also can use difference masking to replace the entire background with a different one. To do this, move the original live action video to track 4 and put the new background on track 5. You also need to deactivate the invert effect in the plugin chain for track 2. Finally, I want to credit the article posted by Dave Haddon of Sundance Media Group that laid out the groundwork for this tutorial. Here is a link to that article, and I will post it in the notes for this video. I'm Ron Scott. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you did, please like and share.